Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about all the skeletons. You got a boneyard? If you've been doing lasering for long at all, you've probably got a stack of wood that's got wood and meat on it, but you're like, okay, well, how do I use this? What do I do with it? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. How to get rid of all those skeletons. Hey guys, and thanks again for watching Hobo with Wood. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you've heard me mention, uh, you know, I'm, I do earrings. I do quite a bit of earrings. I don't do earrings because I just thoroughly enjoy it, but it's a great revenue source. And when I'm doing projects that end up having wasted material that's not used in the project, but it's a lot of good beef on there, if I've got time, I will go ahead and lay in one of my earring designs while I'm doing the initial cut so that the earrings are cut out of the material at the same time I'm making the project. But if I'm up against a deadline and don't have time, I just stockpile these and whenever I've got idle time, I'll grab you know several designs. This is one that I was requested. One of my patrons from Patreon asked me if I could do a flamingo earring. And I created this little concept. I kind of like it. Uh, it's available on hobowithwood.com. But that goes into a piece like this. And I can cut out a pair of earrings while I'm doing another project. I sell these for $10 a pair. Uh, this is a little one and a half millimeter, uh, you know, real thin wood. It's not fit for much else besides earrings. But you end up with some heavier duty wood. Uh, this is two and a half or almost three millimeter wood and you don't really want to be making earrings out of something that big at least I don't it's start to get a little bit heavy but it's like okay well, what are you going to do with this you know it's in my opinion it's too thick for earrings but it's not thick enough for much else but if they were layered they could be and so I found a project that I liked and then I've modified it and made my own version of it. And I'm going to show you that now. I find myself working in the shop almost always by myself. And when I'm gluing up stuff, he's never have enough hands. And I don't have the funds to go out and buy all these fancy clamps that you see at Rockler and all these other places. You, you see guys has got a row, a wall of clamps. Have some money tied up in those things. They're, they're nice, but sometimes you don't need something that big, but you do need another pair of hands. So I found this. This is laser cut out of scrap, and it works pretty good. If you're doing a small little glue-up project, making these. You glue up your first one by hand, but, and, uh, but whenever you start making another pair or two, you use these to hold them together as you're gluing them up. Now, this design is going to be available for free at hobowithwood.com because I got it offline for free. So I'm not, if I don't even know where I found it. Uh, something I've had in my toolbox for a while, but they come in real useful. The only problem I had with them, it, and it is a totally scalable design, but the proportions on this one, uh, it, it's kind of, uh, a, it's for dainty hands. Uh, I, I feel like, you know, it's just, it's not a good fit for my grip and you can scale it up, but it's still, it, so I redesigned it. I've also got my hobo clamp on the website as well, which is this design and it's got some little finger holds. I've, I've lengthened the handle on it. So it's not as short and as stubby. And this is my hobo clamp. I think it's appropriate name because it's made out of scrap and it's what you'd expect a hobo to do. Uh, but it's uh, this one to me is, is easier to grip, grip and to, to use. 
I'll have this design on hobowithwood.com as well, but I'm gonna ask you if you like that design. I modified it from this one, and if you're proficient with light burn, and you can do that too, but if you just wanna save the time, you know, give me a buck, and you can download this too. I'm gonna put these on there for a dollar. Uh, and download this file, you don't have to modify it. It's a lot easier to grip and handle, but it is also scalable, so it can be scaled up or down to be larger. Now, it's really simple design, and I'm gonna jump in here to Lightburn and show you how it's laid out. But before I do show you, I'm gonna show you the physical pieces. You have a left and right handle made up of three layers. And they're very similar, but completely different. Does that make sense? And on the right handle, or depending on how you're holding it, Two of the pieces are identical, but your inner piece is the unique of those three. Your inner piece has the hook on it, and that's where the pivot's gonna be, but it gets sandwiched between the two like pieces, like so, and there'll be a pivot piece up here that allow these pivot slightly to allow it to grip different size, different widths of wood. And the other trio of pieces are slightly different where the, the, the knob is in the middle piece here. On the other side, the knobs are on the outside. So when they're glued up, they slide in with each other and pivot on each other. So it's a real basic concept, but if you're working on a budget like Hobo and you need an extra pair of hands, these are extremely useful. I mean, you're, and you're making them out of your scrap wood. I do these the same way I do my earrings. When I've got the larger material on the bed, if I am, if I see there's an opportunity, uh, so here, was the K and the motorcycle for the Kawasaki image I did. Well, there's one handle, there's a handle, and there's a handle. So while I'm doing the jobs, if I see a chance, to, and I'm like, hey, I need, I need another pair of clamps. Go ahead and lay them out while you're doing it. But I'm gonna show you a trick in this video on how you can still grab these skeletons. And if you don't have a, a boneyard, I like that. I, uh, one of uh, my neighbors does uh, lasers and was talking to him. He said, yeah, he said, he said we, we use our bone yard a lot. I said, to what? And he said, we got a whole pile of skeletons. I said, what are you talking about? He said, skeletons, pieces of material that you've used, but there's still meat on the bones. He said, we call that the bone yard. And these are the skeletons. I said, well, I, I like that. So if, you, if you're not collecting your set skeletons, you should be because that's, that's, that's valuable uh, pieces of wood there. Especially now that you've got an opportunity to create you some tools that's gonna help you with, in, in the shop, help you with glue ups. That, now, they're not fit for you know, the, those, the pistol grips that you can squeeze and create tension. These are held together with rubber bands and they're really only fit for you know, just that, just to hold the pieces together while the glue sets up but not really for squeezing and pulling parts together, just when you need an extra pair of hands. So let's jump into Lightburn and show you these two files, show you the differences, and show you how easy they are to use, and um, how I can pull a skeleton out of my boneyard after the fact and still get all the meat off that bone if possible. So let's jump into Lightburn. All right, so this is the file for the, the freebie. And as you see, it's set up in pairs here. Um, and these three is one handle. These three are the other handle. And, and when you're gluing up your first one, it can get a little bit confusing if you get them uh, mixed up, but once you really see this, it's not that big of a deal or hard to straighten it out. Two of these have hooks up here at the top. Only two of them do. 
and they are completely different. One's got the rotating, uh, like a ball hip socket, and then there's the, the, the socket for it to fit in, the ball, ball and socket. These little pieces right here are the pivot pieces. This piece right here sets in there, and you glue on either side of it these pieces and you do it with the flat edge facing each other like so and the only tricky part is is that part of the glue up because you're going to want to make sure that this piece does not get glued to the handle you only want it to come and glue to be with the little ball shape that pivots because you get uh, any squeeze out or any excessive glue, it's going to uh, not pivot. So, and I think I've done the scaling issue looking at this here. That one looks like that's too big for that. And I may have inadvertently scaled it whenever I was moving these around. But the file that you will download for free will be a perfect fit. But those two pieces with the hooks on the top, or the little hinge area, those are the middle pieces. They go on either, they go in the middle of either side of these. And you can see these two have got this, the, the cup or the socket, and these two have the ball. So they go opposite each other. The outward pieces with the balls go on the opposite side of the inner piece with the ball. See that? So this is all, and right now, and depending on where you're holding it, it's left or right. But this is one handle, and this is one handle. With the middle pieces being just that, the middle pieces. The difference with my design, the hobo design, and I have these labeled left and left and left center, right, right, and right center, P for pivot and H for hinge. And if you were to get the hobo file, the hobo clamp, it comes with notes, and we're gonna open the notes. And it, the instructions are, are written out for you. This will open up whenever you download the hobo clamp. It says glue the part labeled LC, which is LC for left center. Glue the part labeled LC between the two parts labeled L for left. Glue the part labeled RC between the two parts labeled R. Glue the part labeled H, which is that little bitty piece, to the part labeled P, making sure to align the flat edges. Be careful of excessive glue and clean away any squeeze out. This creates a piece henceforth known as the HP assembly. Once dry, insert the HP assembly into the hook at the end of one of the center handle, and I spelled handle wrong, we'll fix that real quick, handle pieces. Glue a second P to the glued HP assembly. Careful of your squeeze out, you do not want the glue in this piece, you do not want to glue this piece to the handle itself. Repeat steps three and four with the remaining handle. Both handles have been assembled and the glue, and once both handles have been assembled and the glue is dried, interlock the two handles by slipping one into the other. Now this is crucial. The notches above the pivot point, which right here, uh, can't, can't zoom in, but that right there, these notches, they're designed to hold several rubber bands in place. The rubber, rubber bands, bands, I gotta correct all my spelling as I go here. All the rubber bands serve two the rubber bands serve two purposes. One to hold the tool together, and two, they create the clamping tension for the clamps. And this is a tip, and I learned this the hard way, so take it from Hobo. Do not put excessive tension on the first rubber band. Increase the tension with each rubber band by increasing the number of times each one is stretched around the tip. The image is scalable. Be sure to scale all the pieces at once to have the desired outcome. 
unlike what I just showed you on the other side where I scaled them and got those kind of screwed up. But the reason you don't want to put excessive tension on the first rubber band, let's close this, come back to me now. When you first start stretching that rubber band around here, I, I sanded those down and cut to, to try and take away the sharp edges of that wood. But I put three wraps around the rubber band. And depending on the size of your rubber band, now I've got a bag here that they're three and a half inch rubber bands. But with three, when I attempted three stretches and then put another rubber band on with three stretches, another rubber band, and then squeeze it the first time, snap the first rubber band it just it the wood the edges cut and snap that rubber band so if you only put two initial uh, loops around that first one it's not very taut not very stretchy there's not a lot of tension in that rubber band and it serves as a protection barrier between the next rubber bands and the wood and that helps those rubber bands last longer and not pop under the tension and from the sharp edges so the, I put three, a total of three rubber bands on here. The, the first one only had two twist loops around it. The next two had a three. And I might have even been four on the last one. But you can hear, it's you know some pretty good tension. I don't want to snap my finger with it. I mean, it, 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 it'll squeeze and hold. But if I was to you know let it pop, that, it wouldn't tickle. Wouldn't, mm. wouldn't exactly hurt, but it wouldn't tickle. But these are a great way to use your scrap. Now, how can you maximize your bone yard? So well, let me show you what I do. If I've got either one of these files and I go over and I pick up a piece out of my bone yard and I look and I say, okay, well, I can identify this. This is my K and the motorcycle from the Kawasaki. And these are not usually in there. That's uh, where I've used it for some other scrap. But normally I'd have all of this and all of this on a, on a skeleton. So what I do is since I know what this piece is, I know where it came from, I'll actually come back into Lightburn and I will import. And this was the Kawasaki, there, Kawasaki name. And I will look for just that piece. And this one is this piece right here. Yep, this piece. And it was cut out of one of my 300 by 300 millimeter tool paths. So I'll create a 300 by 300 tool path. Send that to the center of the page. I'll grab that. I'll put this on a tool path and send it to the center of the page. And now I know where my meat is at. So now I can start grabbing these and moving them around and place them where I need them to be that will be locked in on the, the patterns you buy if you buy the hobo clamp. But I can now see, all right, that's not gonna fit there without doing some finagling but I can start, let's group them. I can start moving this around to position that where I know it's going to fit. So I've got plenty of meat there and there. And it might be that they need to be rotated. But you see, I, I recognize the skeleton and now I can pull up the original pattern and start positioning these pieces in play to maximize all of the good wood because we don't want to we don't want to waste any wood. So, if you're not making earrings, I strongly suggest you do so. Uh, I've got several different earring files that are available on hobowithwood.com including an earring stand and the earring stand comes with the uh, card, the backing cards. I don't have any of those laying here uh, to hang the earrings on that go on the earring stand. But this 
is something that your average woodworker probably gets thrown away because he's like, oh, I can't use that. Yeah, you can. You can actually get two pairs of earrings out of there. That waste is worth 20 bucks in earrings. So think about making earrings. You need any clamps in the shop, but you don't want to go to Rockler and pay a, you know $100 for a pair of clamps. Make your own. It's not difficult. It's smart, and it's eco-friendly. We're not wasting any wood. Uh, these files are going to be available on HoboWithWood.com. I think I've mentioned that. These will be free, 100% free. If you want to get the hobo clamp, which has got the elongated handle with the finger holds, those are going to be a dollar. While you're there, look at all the other files. Consider getting some earring files. Get the earring stand. Go ahead and spend some money, and maybe if enough people buy enough of these, I might be able to go buy me a pair of fancy uh, clamps for when I'm doing a, a big project that needs some serious tension. But not until you guys buy a bunch of these. So I hope this has been uh, informative. I hope you uh, jump over to Hobo with Wood, check out the, the website, download these for free. You can modify them and do the same here that I've done, or you can save the time and spend a buck buy me a biscuit if you're interested in supporting this channel uh becoming a patron on patreon that's patreon.com slash hobo with wood or on my webpage hobo dot hobo with .com, there is on the top page up there an opportunity to adopt a hobo and if you're not interested in being a patron or signing up on patreon you can go to adopt a hobo and it has links there for the PayPal account, and you can just buy me a biscuit. So that's going to be it for this video. Jump over to where? HoboWithWood.com. And until the next video, I'm Steve, Hobo With Wood, and I'm out.